Good morning. Finding a sense of purpose in life.、Uh, living in the Philippines. Now we're not going to go through this、uh, whole scenario of how much money does it take to live in the Philippines, and it it's really individualistic, according what your lifestyle is and all that. So that's been a topic that's been touched upon so many times.、Uh, let me talk about my time so far spent. In the Philippines,、uh, if you were to ask me, do you find a sense of community where you live? Absolutely.、Uh, it's there's a lot of people actually in Santa Fe,、uh, but people know who we are, and even if they don't know us by name,、uh, we feel comfortable every time we're in town. People recognize us. Gilda is like、uh, she's a social butterfly, and everybody likes.、Her. Maybe John Blaze don't like her, but everybody likes her here. No matter where she goes, she's very bubbly.、Um, And you can't help really smile when you're around her. So she's made a, a lot of friends out here.、Um, basically, her acquaintances are mine, and as such, you know, we're never alone here.、Um, we have people we could turn to, people who could support us in different ways.、Um, so we've gathered not only friendships here. But you know, services, anything that needs to be done with the house, we've made a lot of great contacts with with that. You know,、um, when you live in a、uh, basically a small community like this,、uh, all right. So many times you hear me saying that, yeah, you know, the amenities are not really big out here.、Um, but you know, it, having a home base like this where I live is、uh, something that.、Uh, It allows me to use my home as a base, and whether we go anywhere, whether it's just simply Cebu, even the smallest getaway is very satisfactory to us. We just came back from, you know, we don't travel, you know.、And、there's a lot of reasons I don't travel, and I talked about it. It's just a hassle for one, and how many forms of transportation to get from one point to another. And truthfully, even even old dog new tricks. You see the. Doing a live this morning, people asking questions about things. Like that. He says pretty much what I say that most places look alike,、um, pretty much. And as I always said, I you know as far as beaches, going to visit Boracay or places like that, I you know as I said I I live right down there, a twelve minute walk to white sand beaches and. What do most people do when they come to the Philippines? Anyway, this is a show more about you know adjusting to living out here in the Philippines.、Um, it does take an adjustment, but you know I I look back. Oh, about the beach thing. Yeah, I live right close to the beaches. So、um, let's see. I'll trip to Baguio. I haven't been many places. You know, Leyte, of course. I've been there. I've been most. A lot of the surrounding towns of Cebu City, been in and out of these places. I've been to Surau Mountains outside of、uh, Lahug, you know, places like that. But、um, yeah, we generally don't travel a lot. It's just that it's not, you know, it's not really a matter of affordability. It's just a hassle, you know. And where I might have been a lot more adventurous when I was a lot younger. I don't really have that total sense of adventure right now. I'm kind of comfortable in my own place, and I don't mind、uh, hanging around, watching a good movie.、Uh, I mean, even a, a small bonka boat trip to a nearby island, which we're going to be doing more of,、uh, I get enjoyment out of that. You know, it's it's a matter of having.、Um, it's really a sense of community out here. There isn't a lot of crime in this town, and、uh, I feel safe.、Um, I did get ripped off when I used to live at the other house in the beginning. There were some teenagers, you know, just finding a bad way in life. You know, it was kind of a scary incident because I don't know if they carried weapons or something that would be a concern of mine. It does happen. Okay, it does happen, but I could definitely speak for my community. And I really know when you when you really want to know. About the spirit of the community, it takes these festivals to see that the people here have always been so friendly. So what I'm really doing this morning is I'm kind of getting into my feelings about this stage of life I'm in, where I'm living.、Um, I feel, you know, for once in my life, really, I feel really settled in 
and settle down. And I'm sitting out here, it's a cool morning. I have really no houses across the street here. I got a field, it's nice. I don't have houses facing me. I got a good neighbor next door. And a lot next to us that belongs to this Arab guy. You know, we, don't, we don't have like a lot of uh, people like surrounding us. And feel kind of closed in, in a type of community where houses are butted against each other, you know, which would not work very well for me. Um, cost of living out here has risen since I've been out here. I could, I could definitely tell you that. But we're more so I'm going to talk about a sense of community living out here, how I've adjusted to living out here in the Philippines. And um, the sad thing is, is that uh, as far as like on YouTube, and let's please not judge everybody due to the trolls on on YouTube, Don't, you know, that's a handful of people that just basically a bunch of screw ups, but I, I'm not going to judge all the, uh, I'm not going to judge all the expats to be that way. Um, there's a lot of expats that are not on YouTube, believe it or not, there are expats that are not on YouTube, and they're probably better off not. I think uh, it was both a blessing and a mistake that I got involved with YouTube. The blessing is that, uh, let me use that word quite loosely, this sounds very religious, which I'm not really, but let's use the word blessing, is that I feel a wholeness, which I haven't had for a while, having met my girlfriend, and I was at a stage where, I don't know where I was really, I mean, I had my fill of Hawaii, <laughs> more than you can, more than you know, so I feel fortunate I was able to live in one in practically the most unobtainable places to live financially in the United States. And I managed for like 14, 15 years, whatever it's been. To be able to survive on whatever I made per month on my social security, because I had a little rent situation going there that, that supplemented my income. You know, basically you paid my mortgage, you're able to pay the utilities and have some money that's left over, but not a lot. I wasn't surviving on a lot of money in, uh, why but fortunately I've always had you know I've always had something in the bank from prior situations I might have went over on my shows I talk about a whole lot of shit on here I've always had some sort of nest egg so I wasn't feeling really uncomfortable not really um, so I uh, spent all these years in Hawaii and I got the fill of it and I'm still going to say this, that I feel very fortunate to have lived in Hawaii because it is, let's call it a spiritual place, not related to the religion. It really was. I mean, I've been to areas in Hawaii where kings, I've sat on stone benches that the kings have actually sat on. It was looking out at the ocean. Uh, even being a place very spiritual called the... Uh, place of refuge, and there's a Hawaiian name for that, but called the place of refuge, where if you committed any kind of crimes against the society, uh, it kind of goes like this, if you were able to swim out to this location, you'd be kind of absolved of your crimes or whatever. Some people had to do that, some people got eaten by sharks, but if you visit there today, there's wooden carvings, statues of uh, they go back, uh, I'm sure they restored this, and there's a big graveyard of one of the kings there, one of the Kamehameha, a really spiritual place, and then there was other places too that were so incredible, if you wanted to find peace, mountains and ocean, waterfalls, all in one place, that I felt very privileged, I mean I felt, I felt very privileged to live in Hawaii, because not many people could afford to live, for people thinking that Hilo, Hawaii, which is the general area, side of the island that I lived on, they thought was poor. Well, they were poorly mistaken. Um, a lot of people had money on the east side of the big island. Um, the big island is, yes, it's probably one of the most affordable places to live. According to how you wanted to live, you're going to rent or you're going to buy a house. I got in at a good time, actually, when I bought my house. So, um, and it did gain some value. And I, I'll, I'll be really honest with you. For the most time I lived there, my house never kept the value mortgage owed and compared to market value. It then it came to be a, a really good time when it was a seller's market. And you know, I got tired of being a landlord and all the bullshit I had to go through. And you really don't know all the bullshit. You just know what you think you know. 
That's all you know. But I'm not going to get into that. Let's just say I got tired of being a landlord. And uh, it was just time to to fly to Coop. And fortunately for me on my trips to the Philippines, I did finally meet somebody after some trial and effort that opened up my whole world wide open. I'm still with her now today. And, uh, you know, sometimes I do. Sometimes don't always appreciate where I'm living here. Well, you probably say, well, you know, got Hawaii. You had to appreciate it living there. To a certain point, I did. Getting involved with botanicals, you know, I, I was really into that stuff. I, I don't just know how much I was into that. We grew around there where there was a few fruit trees, you know, bushes, you know, um, uh, New Guinea and patients were everywhere. There was so much color I had at one time. There was always something to do around the house that kept me busy all the time. But I, I really didn't have a lot of friends out there in Hawaii. It was kind of difficult making friends. I didn't fall into a certain... Well, you know, this side of the island was... You know, you had a lot of quasi-hippies, uh, New Age hippies, you know, the marijuana culture, which I just really never got involved with. Um, of course, I'd gotten high off pot in my life. Sure, I have a few times, but it wasn't for me. I was right in the middle of what I call it guerrilla territory, where we had DEA helicopters would come down and they'll wind up confiscating everybody's stash. You see them guys climbing down a rope, coming up with a big arm full. <laughs> well, they just go down there, they'd spray their crop with this black goop that would poison it, they could never use it, you know. Everybody was very private, you know, kapu. With the signs you see it on everybody's gate, kapu, meaning stay the fuck out. Don't dare come in my property. Because they were all growing. They were all growing. The economy in, in, in Hawaii was dependent a lot on the marijuana industry, whether you knew that or not, certainly on a big island. Whether you knew that or not, you know that now. It was big time. But, you know, ice, the drug of choice out there, was getting really bad. And so many ice addicts, you know, meth, and it was stealing and you know, the crimes. And then there was this attitude, of course, I've talked about with Hawaiian nationals. So whether they were full-blooded or not, most were not full-blooded. Uh, but they had this sense of, you know, you're invading our territory. You know? We want you to know we don't like you. But I went through this before. You know, they depended on everything from America. Cars, programs, governmental programs that helped them. I don't even want to get into that. There's a lot of hypocrisy going on in Hawaii, okay? A whole lot of hypocrisy. So I don't regret moving to Hawaii when I did. Beautiful place. The waves were different. The ocean was different in the Philippines and Hawaii. Far better, far better. I, don't get me wrong, I like it out here, but the ocean... Yeah, there's a lot to say about the beauty of the oceans and the waves and places you can go to at times of the year. 40 foot plus wave breakers would come in, mostly like in Maui and Oahu. And just incredible surf to watch. That was worth it alone. Um, seeing whales, I used to do a lot of time, binoculars and whatnot, uh, looking at the dolphins and the whales passing through. Just, just incredible. So I do not regret living in Hawaii, but it came to a point of time where it was enough for me. When my life, it was not going anywhere. I did not have the biggest social st uh, structure in my life at all there. I really didn't. I lived day by day. I was what I'm doing here, but it was different. I mostly be working in the yard, you know, doing things like that, making trips around the island or specific places. There were beach resorts on the other side of the island. I'd go to Kona every now and then, which had more activities than Hilo because that was more of a tourist place. Well, it's good. I mean, Hawaii is good. Not for everybody, though. And I kind of grew out of my, you know, grew out of my shorts. I needed a, a different size shorts, okay? So I needed that change. And I'm so glad I started my quest or interest in the Philippines because I, I don't know. I couldn't really be in a better place than I know of. I, I just don't think so, you know language because there is English out here and you know I was thinking of all, all, all kinds of different places at the time. You know, what's that town? Cuenta? Suenta? In, in, uh, uh, I forgot the name of this town but there, there was places outside of the Philippines, different countries I was considering but Spanish very heavy 
And I know a little bit, but not enough. So that, that was kind of out of the question. Was it Cuenca? Ecuador. Ecuador. That was a place I was thinking about. Yeah. Anyway, a lot of thoughts came to mind. Anyway, I wound up here. And, God, the years are going by so fast. And uh, I've managed to keep my head above water because I always planned ahead. So things worked out, you know, things worked out good for me and Gilda here because between the both of us, our income, you know, we do fairly well. Um, at times, I do find myself withdrawing from my bank account when I have to, but that's what it's all about. But to people, I don't want to get into what it costs the living and all that to stay out here. But my Social Security check alone has never been a problem. I don't know what they're talking about. Living below poverty, whatever. Well, you know. I was on Social Security for a long time, so I was living below so-called poverty level in America for a long time, and I, I managed, so I don't know what all this bullshit's about. <laughs> My Social Security check, just that alone, we could live off, and we've been doing that for a long time, actually. Except this past year, it turned out good for us. We made some wise investments. And that involved a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and so it's really helped us out a lot. I mean, really helped us out. But don't forget... Money was carried over from other sources and all that crap. And no, I'm not rich by any standards, not even by American standards. Certainly not. I'm really not. Uh, and I haven't been bullshitting you about my income. I, I have no problem saying I make, what is it, 14, 20 a month on Social Security? There's nothing wrong with that. I can live on it. And I've been prior to last year. I've been living off that. It didn't matter if I needed money, I'd go to bank. So we do, we've done okay. We've done okay. I'm not really big into travel. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not really big into traveling. And I, we decided to go over to Baguio because I, I like the mountains It's a, for a change. And then although I bitch a lot about the hot weather and sea level here, I had to bitch about how cold it got in Baguio at times. I wasn't used to that, so it gave me an appreciation for where I've been living now. So it really did. But it wasn't the worst experience. It wasn't the best. Uh, because there was a lot of pollution there, the amount of cars... Even at that elevation, but it was, you know, you know, it was really interesting. We were flying over the mountains, getting there, and going back. You can see all these homes. I mean, talk about some really remote areas in these big ass mountain range. They're covered. I don't know how many thousands of square miles. It's just incredible. And you could see, because the plane, you know, didn't fly that high. And you can see that there were little villages and establishments in these mountains. People, you talk about living remote. People do it out here. They, they certainly do. They manage. Just flying in that plane, looking down, it's amazing what you see down there. I never knew there were lakes up there. there were, for what I've seen, I've seen a lot of dams. There were dams I could see up there from looking down. They were absolute dams. What they were. People manage. So here I am. I found myself of all places on another island. I lived on an island in Hawaii and found myself on another island again. There seems to be a pattern to this, you know. It's not a huge island and it's on the... Poseidon Sea, uh, fishing village, basically. Uh, the people are really friendly. I never had a problem with anybody. Never had not one problem with trying to think. Oh, I might have had a few people that have serviced my house that I can't say I had a real problem with, but maybe just like they were charging me because I was like white as snow. I've been taken advantage of that before, like most people, like most people really are, if you're a foreigner. That's always bothered me, but I've gotten used to the idea that it's kind of like trying to figure that you don't know any better on the prices and try to take advantage of you. Remember that guy who was trying to sell me a car once, you know? Remember I played his recording on there? He says, well, you know, you're a, you're a Westerner and you got money. So in other words, I, I can afford to charge you more than the car is worth. He said it. I, did, I played his recording right on air. I'm privileged. And if you compare what you're making on your dollar for per pesos, then you're privileged and you're doing better than we'll ever do because conversion, you know, with the peso to dollar, vice versa, you know, that was doing really well. And basically we are, you know, if it's around a 50 peso mark, you know, you're, you're doing well. Um, so that, I thought that was rude and crude and... and Make it a judgment uh, that because I'm a foreigner that I'm loaded with money, you know, which I'm not, you know, U.S. or Philippines, not really. Well, I guess Filipinos would think we're loaded with money because, you know, our house is actually a nice house. I mean, it really is. It's not a mansion. I joke about it, but it's 
it's actually a nice house. It stands out. A lot of people think, well, yeah, definitely a foreigner living here. He must got money. You see a lot of houses around. They're not too fancy. And money ain't really fancy. It's nice, but it's not really fancy. But they look at you and they kind of say, oh yeah, you know, this guy's got money. You know, well, maybe compared to some people that live here and what their salaries are, that yeah, I guess I do have money according to them. In comparison, they're probably right on that. No, I don't know what people think I have in the bank. I, I have a I have a nest egg, and that's as far as I'll go on that. It's, I don't mind talking about what I make on my Social Security because that's been talked about with other foreigners all the time. They have no problem talking about it. I have no problem. Some people make fun of it. Ah, oh, you worked all your life, and that's all you make is fourteen hundred twenty. Well, I was a little more than that. They took one hundred sixty off to top uh, because of my uh, Medicare, and I had to pay into this. It was well overdue. Kind of got away with that for a while. Uh, hit between the cracks somehow, but uh, the Medicare Part B, so I actually made more than fourteen twenty a month. Add one hundred sixty to that. It still isn't bad. It's not bad. I mean, to live under the amount that I make on Social Security, yeah, I could see is according to your lifestyle where that could be a problem. We got two kids living with us here, so um, and we. Well, we have expenses to pay like anybody else, food and electricity, things like that. You know, internet, all that shit. You know, clothing for us, for the kids, over-the-counter products besides food and stuff. I mean, it adds up. We're doing, we're doing okay, actually. Thank you very much for anybody who gives a shit. I am doing okay. Um, Health-wise, I'm even surprised I've been holding up, really. Other than the obvious thing, I always have. I told you, I always have allergy problems. Lungs seem to be holding up, you know. And despite the the bad boys out there to say, "Oh, you're gonna die from COPD." Well, I hope not. I certainly hope not. I don't have it. I've done spirometry tests. Other than that, it's just some other ailments. I've been talking about the show. Just got other ailments. I'm okay. I'm really energetic. And you'd have to see me, no matter where I was, Subu or anywhere else I'd visit. You see me walking to the street. You say, "How does this guy get that energy? He walks so fast, with so much energy." You know, I'm up and down steps, up and down steps, this and that. I'm not doing bad for my age, actually. I used to question myself, and I say, "Am I really doing good for my age?" It took people like doctors to tell me that. You know, you're okay, Mr. B. You're too concerned about live your life. You're too concerned about if this happens and that happens. Well, you know, you start thinking about your mortality when you get a certain age. I, I guess I'm no different than anybody else. But I guess I would probably have to say that I'm doing better than a lot of people. Certainly, that I've seen on YouTube here. I mean, if I had a wild guess at what their health situations are, I'd probably be right. I'm okay, is what I'm trying to say, and put it in short terms. I'm okay.、Um, you rarely hear me cough. In the past, I, I did be, when I had my allergies would act up. I'd be coughing a lot. The only time I cough, like like right now, <coughs> is when it's an early morning dry cough. I do that now and then. And, and while having this sinusitis thing happen from my come back from my trip, on my nose, I get postnasal drip, and that could make me, you know, cough a little bit. I might have to spit up something. Other than I'm okay. The family I have now is my family. Look, I'll be quite open. Definite dysfunctional family I've had. Definitely dysfunctional. I didn't want to be part of that dream team, if you know what I mean. I just did not want. And blood or not, it didn't matter. But respect has always been the important thing to me. Our politics could be different. If you don't show me respect, I don't care who you are. Blood or not, daughter, mother, father, brother, sister, don't make a damn difference to me. If you don't show me respect, I'm not going to give it back, and I'd rather live my life without you because I have a family right here. It's the first sense of family that I've ever had in a long time. The kids are really amazing kids, and they're smart. Mom did something right, and through my guidance, they're doing very well out here. Thank you very much. And we have no quarrels around here at all with the kids. Her family is definitely my family. I'm regarded. I fit right in. Like I'm just like I'm a Filipino in their family. Never the color, less, never less the color of my skin. I'm not looked at differently in any way, at all. They all respect me. I never got that from my family. So this is my new family. It is family. And when my day comes to leave this earth, I would have died, living the life that I chose, that I wanted. 
that I succeeded in living. I've always made choices and I kept to them. When I, from, when I left New York and I went to another state, lived there almost a lifetime, and I lived another state, it would seem like another lifetime. It was good for its purpose and it was good for its time. But then maybe that did not work for me for whatever reasons I may have discussed on here. I'm at my last place where I'm going to be on Earth right here. What the hell could be bad about this? 12 minutes of white sand beaches right here, right down the road, man, right down from where I'm at right now. Okay, I've got a couple of great neighbors. I feel comfortable in my own skin. Um, I'm not phased by all this judgment on YouTube. YouTube is just a, a smidgen of my life that I come on. And what people say about me or this or that, it's just, it's according to what they say. And unfortunately for some, it kind of come to a bad road for them. They kind of went over that line. I always say I have an imaginary line in my life. When you cross it in some way, I'm not forgetting you. I'm not forgetting you, no matter who you might be. You're not forgotten. You cross that line that much, well, we'll see what happens in the future. One guy is suffering like hell right now. He hates my gut. Well, I'm the one that should hate his gut. You don't label people certain things, and you know what that's all about. You've been following me. That was payment time for all these people that have ever called me something like that, which just degraded my girlfriend the way they did. Now, you're not forgotten. Trust me. You're not forgotten. And you don't know what I do silently off YouTube. You don't know. Because contrary to what you believe, I don't talk about everything, okay? But let's get this video on a more positive note here. Um, I am living the life that I want to live, okay? And maybe I'm not world-traveled and crap like that, but that don't, it doesn't phase me and it never really did. I would have liked to go into Italy. Um, it's, it's to travel. Once you're there, you're great. You get how many damn hours on an airplane, man? Once you're there, you're fine. Everybody's always trying to take advantage of you, no matter where you go, whether it's Italy or France or anywhere. You're a freaking tourist. They recognize that. They're going to charge you more money. I hate being ripped off by people. I really do. People are all the same no matter where you go, okay? They're all the same. There's greedy people, self-righteous, no matter where you go. You're trying to find utopia, but you're not going to find it. But to me, this is the closest thing to utopia in my life. Well, I have a real sense of family. A real sense of family, which I've never really had. Not really. So I made my way to a place that worked out for me. It may not work out for everybody out there. Do I get bored? Fuck yeah. I got bored in Hawaii too, of all places. There were times I got bored in Seattle. And people make fun about, oh gee, he worked for the Parks Department. Best job I ever had in my life. You realize, man... I wasn't making a fortune. 17 bu plus bucks an hour back in those days, that was pretty good money. The benefits were great. The bennies were just fucking great. I took advantage of them, man. I was working in beautiful park, the beautiful park. I wasn't behind a desk. How much is that worth to you? Well, Frank didn't make a lot of money. No, I didn't make a lot of money. But Jesus, Christmas, man. Have you ever been to Seattle? Have you ever seen their parks? And how many of there are? Some are right on the ocean or, you know, near Puget Sound or on Lake Washington. Bill Gates lives on Lake Washington, okay? Let me tell you something. That was a gravy job, no matter what I did. Whether you think I was cleaning toilets, whatever you think I did for my job, it was an honest job and I didn't... Yeah, I have cleaned toilets. I certainly have. It's according to what hat I was wearing. As I told you, I worked everything for horticulture people. Uh, I worked the grounds crews, which consisted of doing grounds maintenance weed eating, aerating, you name it. I did all that stuff. I enjoyed being out in the parks doing this stuff. In a great climate like Seattle, it was never that. Well, the winters could get cold, but the summers were pretty good until the end of the summer it could get real hot. But Jesus Christ, man, I was basically on my own, in my own truck, riding around and listening to the radio, man, have my lunch, whatever. If I had to stop off somewhere, whatever, on my route, I'd stop off. I had to go into 7-Eleven or something, man. <laughs> bullshit with somebody in a park, you know. I mean, it was gravy, man. And people make fun of my job, but it was gravy. It was, it was. It's just that I, I worked with a lot of fucking losers that didn't want to do their job, and I wind up doing a lot of their job. But did I get the credit for it? No, I didn't. That, that's what kind of turned me off, where I kind of needed to change. And that's why, really. I just, you know, I got burnt out. My daughter didn't like it, the idea I was going to move out of Seattle. She's just having a baby. In fact, the day I was leaving, she had a baby. 
I was there long enough at the hospital to see the baby born, see the baby was born. And I had a van waiting for me at my rental at the time. I moved out of the house that I sold. So you didn't know that, did you? Okay. And uh, had to go. My dog didn't even know what was going on. I had a, a, a kennel waiting for the dog. I had to leave things behind in the apartment I gave to the neighbors. Because I, I didn't know what the hell to do with it. Next thing you know, I'm on a van. The dog is wondering, well, what the fuck is going on? At the airport, the dog got to go to this grueling flight and transfer. I mean, it was a relief when I finally got to where I needed to go. You know, but my new life. I had a house waiting for me. A house in freaking Hawaii, man. And Fern Acre is where I live. Paved roads, community association. Oh, yeah, there were a lot of, you know, tokers out there, you know. Absolutely. It's all, that's all Hawaii was. Everyone and their grandmother, you know. The way it was. It's the way it still is. But the beauty that I experienced in Hawaii, the spiritual moments that I experienced in Hawaii, was seemed unachievable anywhere. Some of the little remote beaches where people gathered. It was kind of like a, a Woodstock festival in one of the places, you know. But the way the waves come crashing in, it was a black sand kind of beach kind of thing. You had to climb down the rocks to get down there. There was no trail. Nudity was allowed there. It wasn't a public park. It wasn't, you know, wasn't maintained. I had some great experiences living in Hawaii. Please don't think I didn't. I mean, that was one heck of a spiritual place really, uh, you know, I don't regret living in New York, the greatest, well, the city would be the greatest city in the world, and living in the suburbs of New York, had a good childhood, can't complain about that, parents weren't rich, but, you know, we never went without, there came time to spread my wings, and I did, and that's when I moved to Seattle, because I met a woman at the time, blah, 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 story, I ended up staying there like 25, 26 years, I got to experience living in New York, Washington State, beautiful pine trees, beautiful glacier lakes and mountains and waterfalls and raging rivers. I got to live an experience incredible, incredible. And moving on from there, you know, Seattle to Hawaii, which that, you know, that's the progression it was, it was Seattle to Hawaii, then Hawaii to the Philippines. Am I happy I made this move? I questioned myself at the beginning, and I don't question it anymore. Just, I'm here to stay, that's it, I live and die here. For those that don't live, think I'm living a good life, think all you want. I don't know what's a good life to you. It might be different. What you think is a great life, what I think is a great life. No, I don't have to be traveling here and there. I kind of choose not to. I know, whether from places I've seen already, or from videos, Every town looks alike. The same shit. Trikes and jeepneys and sorry, sorry stores. The only difference is maybe the terrain, if you go to a mountainous region, or a different type of ocean that has different, uh, I don't know, you want to call it topography. Different type of beach atmosphere. Might be a little more to see, like big hidden caves, some beautiful coves. Oh, yeah. There's some incredible beaches out there I have not been to. But it's not a prerequisite for me to live here is to have to go to Apollo on those places I haven't seen. There are beautiful, oh, I mean, hey, what I've seen, there are beautiful places in the Philippines. I watch a lot of TV, even though I've never been to a lot of these places, I know there is beauty in the Philippines. It doesn't, my life ain't over yet. It doesn't mean I'm not going to any more of these places. But I'm actually very comfortable in my little niche where I'm living right now. If I want to go somewhere, we make a trip. Simple as that. When I'm ready to do it again, if I decide to choose a particular place, I'm going to be very particular this time to choose a place to go to. I'm happy. I'm happy being with my girlfriend or children, my two dogs. I am truly loved. Are you truly loved? you got to answer that question. I can't. <laughs> Even my dogs love me. I'm happy. Okay. Sometimes I do get bored, but I'm... I, I'm really happy. I couldn't have found a better partner. I heard her put up with me. And I'll say that out front. To put up with me. She's a good gal, let me tell you. <laughs> I, I, I don't deserve her. I know that. But we love each other. And I found the love of my life. I found a new family. And even though my own blood family not on board with everything with me, that's okay. I did my job as a parent. I'm proud of the job. that I, We don't see eye to eye in modern contemporary times. 
oh well, I made my efforts and you can't change people if they don't want to change, folks. You just can't. It's an impossibility. So I'm not going to try to do that. I'm going to live my life until the day I die. I'm going to live my life my way, the way I want to live my life, without anybody telling me what to do or what I should be doing or... You know, they don't like my politics or whatever. Fuck that. Now, no matter who likes me, even on YouTube or does it doesn't matter to me. I'm still here. I'm doing my thing. It's those who appreciate my show and how open and honest I am. And there's other people that don't. You're going to find something wrong with everything. Even the dogs. I mean, you know. <laughs> find something wrong with Gilda. Attractive woman, by the way. And everybody knows that. And I've heard this more than one time on here through the years. Even from some enemies or nemesis, let's call them that, nemesis. I lucked out. Okay? Everything fell. The ducks came in a row. Quack, quack, quack. They all came in a row. I'm fine. If you have any question about it, just don't bother to question it. I'm telling you I am fine. My health is good. You know, so far... I'm lucky. My relationship is solid. It always was. I, I believe will continue to be solid and grow even more in time. So, why am I living a bad life? To who? To you? What do you consider a good life? Oh, well, you're more traveled than I am? Maybe your shit doesn't stink? Sure, it does. I'm sure you got quite a stinker to make, sit and make judgment of me and my life. How do you make judgment of me and my life? How do you know what's real and what's not real on YouTube here? If somebody says this and that about you, does that mean it's true? You know what the fact is? Even the worst trolls out there that give me a hard time, they know I'm living a good life. They know I'm happy. But they just, they just want to yank my chain is all it is. I know. That's all it's ever been. They like yanking my chain to get a reaction. That's all it's ever been. Even the biggest haters out there are actually envious of me in some ways. And I know they are. I mean, I know this without doubt. Some of them might even be attracted to me. Now, that's scary. But look, I don't really claim to be anything that I'm not. It's just me. You either like me or you don't like it doesn't, me. It's not relevant, really. I don't care. I got what I want inside this house. A beautiful lady, proper age. I'm not going to have the bubblegum chewers. That's desperate. That's desperate. And I also think it's pretty sick. I don't, you know, my gate don't open that way. I'm with a mature woman. I wouldn't have it any other way. I would have absolutely nothing in common with anybody a lot younger than her. So do I achieve my goal? Yes. Some of you just don't like it. Too fucking bad. I'm living the life that I want to live. And you notice I'm a lot smarter than you thought in the beginning, didn't you? I've been accused of everything in the world on YouTube, and I've always come through. Like Barry would say, prove it. Why? Because somebody had uh, a bogus lawsuit against me in, in Hawaii. <laughs> that's all it was. That's all it was. My like greedy people that saw a paycheck ahead. They're never going to collect on it. So, you know, they said my relationship wouldn't last more than six weeks. It's been eight years. They were claiming I never owned a house in Hawaii. And they figured, oh, yeah, you actually did after all. Crow City, USA. Everything they accused me of, I, I proved otherwise. Everything from a wheelchair girl. That was a good one there. Well, Big E kind of saved the day with that. Yeah, I went through the same thing with this one. It was greedy. I, I'm not going to say I talked myself out of all the bullshit out there, but I think my, I made myself abundantly clear. Without having to put solid proof down on anything I was accused of, everybody saw, and they know, all this bullshit is all hearsay and crap just to pull my chain and all that stuff. I think everybody, even the biggest trolls, they know that. And it's just pulling my chain. That's all it really is. But someone pulled my chain a little bit too much. Now, the ass wipe is in jail. It's going to be his ninth month. More to come. Oh, you still have to ask that question to him. Was it worth it? Was it really worth it? Is it worth it to anybody to attack somebody like they do on here? No. Is it worth it? Right, John? Maybe you'll figure out someday if it was worth it, attacking my girlfriend the way you do. Like I said, man, I could do a whole parody about your girlfriend's mole on her face, but I'm not going to do that. Because I'm a nice guy, okay? I don't want to do what you did with the thumbnail or with the... I, what is it about attention they're all wanting so much? Is that why they come on YouTube? Is it the attention they're looking for? Negative or positive, it's still attention, right? It's the attention. They're attention whores. All these guys. Something lacking in their lives, man. But they want to be like me. They're living their life vicariously through me. I've come to that conclusion. That's all I have to say. Frank out. Have a good day, guys. I'm going to 
start mine.